Welcome back to Open Book Games. I'm Rowan. And I'm Phil. And today we're going to talk about running a DMPC party for your player character in a duet. No, it's a controversial topic. So... Um, now, running DMPCs isn't your only option, but um, it is one that we personally use. Um, but before we get into some do's and don'ts about how you do it, we're going to talk about just briefly talk about some other options that you might have. Because you do have options. That's the beautiful thing about playing a duet. It's essentially limitless. So if you don't want to run a full party of DMPCs or your player doesn't want you to, you could have them truly adventure alone. Um, in that case you might want to have them play with Gestalt rules where they're taking uh, one level and two classes every time they level up so that they're a little stronger. Um, that you could also have them run two characters at once, which sounds not particularly fun to me, but it's an option for you. You can also uh, just have one or two DMPCs who are available sometimes instead of all the time. Yeah, um, or you can do what we've been doing um, with mostly good results, which is to run a, pretty much a full party of DMPCs uh, to complement your player. So without further ado, um, some, some do's and don'ts. Um, <laughs> some duets and don'ts about running <laughs> DMPCs in a so, duet game. So, uh, after that terrible pun, do complement your player's skill gaps. Um, every character is going to have gaps in what they can and can't do, which they should. Um, you should never have a character who's good at every single skill because that gets kind of boring and a yeah. little tedious. If, if you've played any video game with cheats on that essentially enable some kind of god mode, um, you know that it's fun for a little bit, and then it gets really old, because um, if there's no challenge at all, then it's just boring and kind of a waste of time. Um, so this doesn't just apply to skills, as you know they apply in the game, but also to their abilities in combat. If your player can't heal, have a DMPC who can heal. If they can't cast spells, have a few spellcasters available for them. Taya is a rogue. She's my character in the duet that Phil runs for me. Um, she's pretty squishy, so she has a few support characters like Toby and Rogar who can take some hits for her. She also has a few arcane casters and uh, divine casters who can complement those skills. Yeah, magic. <laughs> um, next, don't outshine your player character. Hmm. So everybody's played with that player, TM, uh, who always wants to steal the spotlight. So in a duet, you don't necessarily run into that player issue uh, because there's only one player at the table, but uh, you don't want your DMPCs to outshine your character consistently, or really ever. It yeah. happens sometimes though. Yeah, and occasionally it's okay to let kind of one of these kind of supporting characters have a moment in the spotlight. But generally speaking, the player character should be the hero. Let them be the hero, and occasionally the other player, the other characters can swoop in and save the day, but generally speaking, let the player be the hero. Um, if, you, if you're doing the first do, uh, complementing the skill gaps, that's usually pretty easy, because you can just let the player make the choices and have the other characters support. But if you do plan on having for some specific reason, having a character with similar skills and abilities, just make sure that they're not outright better than the player's character. Um, if you do, then it's going to make the player feel kind of secondary to whatever you're doing as the DM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so next up is do compartmentalize, which is kind of hard to explain. So when you're when you're DMing a duet, you have to play every character, every NPC, every antagonist, um, every player character if you're running a party for your player. Um, and each of those characters are going to know different pieces of information. They're going to have different um, motivations for what they're doing, what they're not doing, uh, what they would suggest. Um, you have to give that information to your player through the different voices and eyes of the characters that you're playing. Um, 
A good example would be in the duet that I'm running for Phil, uh, the rogue Jahar has some family ties where he might try to uh, sway Elias to do... <laughs> it's a whole thing. We'll cover it in another episode. It's a very intricate story. Anyway, uh, Jahar would probably tell Elias to make decisions based on emotional ties to his family. Um, where Vara, the sylph shaman, might uh, make a more uh, logical, rational choice because she doesn't have that familial tie. Now, this gets even more complicated when you consider what different characters have been around to hear. Um, it's not just about what they know as far as like, oh, well, this character knows a lot about Arcana and this character knows a lot about nature. It's about what they know about the ongoing events and the plot of your campaign. So your best friend in doing that is taking extensive notes and having at least a, a few sentences written down about what each char character's personality and motivation are. Um, so that's kind of what we mean by compartmentalizing. Um, once you've started to play, it'll start to make more sense uh, just because you won't want all of the DM NPCs to sound the same or to have the same opinions. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of ties into our next don't, which is don't use your DM PCs to give your personal opinion to the players. Um, you as the DM, it's tempting once you start kind of feeling like you have a player or a character in the party to think, oh, well, now I'm kind of a player, but you're not. You are still the DM and it's not really fair for you to think along the lines of, well, as a player, this is what I would want to do and to then put in that input through one of the characters. You really need to think, and I know this phrase gets a lot of flack, you really need to think, what would my character do? Not what would I want to do if I were a part of the party? Because the party is a party of one. Yeah, that, that one can get a little tough to manage uh, when you're first starting out playing a duet if you're at least for me, it was difficult when I was DMing at first. Um, it's tricky for me too. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Not just me. Um, the other don't that kind of ties into that is that you don't want to um, metagame as a DM. So it's usually the player who's accused of metagaming, um, but if you are DMing a duet, uh, you know everything. So you can essentially cheat if you want to if you wanted to railroad your player character into one specific path, you could very easily do that as the DM to do it. And that's, don't do that. That's really horrible. <laughs> it is tempting, especially if you have some really cool idea planned to kind of subtly guide the player that direction, but you shouldn't. If the player <laughs> asks, if the player asks for advice from a specific character, you should think, well, what would that character want to do? Um, and a good example, for that is um, I have one uh, DMPC for the campaign I'm running for Rowan named Rashid, and Rashid is very smart, but he's a bit of a coward. So all of the advice that he's going to give is going to center around defense, self-preservation, and uh, essentially safety first. He's not above, um, you know, striking out, but he's going to be the one to overplan. He's going to be the one to overprepare. Sometimes that's helpful advice. Sometimes it's not the best plan. But regardless, that's what he's going to suggest, regardless of what I think. Yeah, I might have messed that up one time when I first started running your duet. We'll talk about that later. Mistakes happen. <laughs> well, <laughs> our camera died in the middle of recording. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so. Back into it. Do have your DMPCs have lives and obligations outside of whatever their obligation is to the player character or the player character's story. Um, I don't consider it a mistake, but in the two duets that we're currently running, uh, our characters or our DMPCs are always available to the player character. Um, it's been interesting to have that be the case. Yeah, um, and this is kind of where we defer a little bit. Um, I on my part, I do consider it to be a bit of a mistake. Um, I think it makes more sense in the campaign that Rowan is running for me than it does in the campaign that I'm running for her. Um, a lot of the things that happen in the campaign that I'm running for her 
revolve around her character or her shop or they're just more personal and less involving the entire group. So it makes less sense that she can essentially pop into the headquarters at any time and pick up whoever she needs to, which she basically can with the exception of one or two characters. Um, I did it that way because it felt safer for me as a DM to give her these options and that I could make combats and challenges that were more in line with what I'd done before. But it just makes the world feel a little bit less realistic when the problems that she's dealing with don't necessarily involve all these people. Why should they care? Why shouldn't they continue out on with their jobs and their lives and their families and everything? Uh, one good example from that would be Toby, who is a bard. Um, he shouldn't be available all the time. Even though he's the love interest for Taya, he should have responsibilities and shows to play and people to swindle or whatever. And his own goals. And his own goals, which we'll talk about that also in a different episode. We really need to record the campaign diaries for our current duets. Uh, we'll do that very soon. The context will help. It will help a lot. Um, so our next don't is... Apologies if you were done. Okay, so our next don't is uh, have your DMPCs be open books. <laughs> they said the Oh my goodness. Okay, so don't have them be open books. Um, by this we mean... Well, what do we mean? Your characters that you run as the DM should have secrets. They should have things that they're not necessarily comfortable talking about. They may have allegiances outside. They may have histories that are uncomfortable. Don't, don't rush to reveal all of that. Leaving some of it to come up later can be very rewarding, especially when it ties into the plot. And as the DM, it can kind of give you extra ways to deliver information to the player. Not in a way to lead them on, but just in a way to kind of have exposition about what is happening. And it gives more depth to the characters, too. Instead of just having a generic bard or a generic rogue, you might have um, Toby, again, for example. Uh, one of the first side quests that Taya wanted to do in the uh, duet that Phil's running for me is uh, figure out why Toby is sad. There's a note in my binder that is, why is Toby sad? <laughs> And he was feeling sad when we were on an adventure together because uh, he feels like he, or he felt like he was never going to really amount to anything and he was never going to get to play his music in the noble houses or whatever. So I found a way to make that happen. Um, so it was, a, it was a really fun side quest to make that happen for a person that I cared about. So planning out some of these things and also leaving some gaps for yourself for those characters to explain and reveal later can give you those kinds of side quests. Um, and think about the way that you interact with people. You don't meet someone on the street or even someone that you've been working with for a while and just reveal your life story and all of your deepest, darkest fears, secrets, and hurts. Well, I hope you don't do that. Please don't do that. That's, um, don't do that. We certainly don't. So <laughs> We don't. <laughs> <laughs> so let your characters have time to reveal who they are and what's kind of going on behind the scenes to the player. Do it on screen, in the game, and let that develop the drama. Maybe it causes tension, maybe it makes one of the player character, one of the DM player characters leave and mm. maybe turn on them. That almost happened in Do It with Elias, where, uh, God, it's such a... What? Th it did? Yeah, Jahar almost left the... <sighs> There's so much lore. <laughs> the backstory. The backstory. We'll talk about it later. I almost made Jar leave. Oh, yeah. man. Well, now we're going to have our own little breakdown after this video. So, anyway, that's been our... This is probably an intro because there's just so much to go over and how to run a duet and how to run PCs in... Well, as the DM uh, in a duet. Or, I guess, at a table, too. You really probably don't need to do that. Anyway... Um, this has been Open Book Games and our intro to how to run DM PCs for your duet, if that's what you're into, as well as some other options for not doing that. So uh, tune in next time. We're going to have a lot more content for duets, and it's becoming more obvious that we need to get some kind of campaign diaries. It's just, there's two years of play here, so it's taken a while to figure out how we need to summarize it. But thanks that's, for stopping ooh, by. That's an idea. We could do two years in two minutes. Oh, Lord. Just cram it all down into... 
If you've been watching this, you already know that I like to ramble, so two minutes is going to be four. No, we're going to do it. It's going to be great. Bye! Bye! <laughs> two minutes, Jesus.